bitching post, motherfucker. What? Okay, this is not so much a bitching post as it's more <laughs> character in the workplace observation slash quick tip on how to survive in the workplace. That's pretty much what it is. <laughs> oh my god, I've been wanting to do this for so long that it's just like I try to avoid it. Okay, so um, before I begin, let me just say, okay, disclaimer. If you are one of my co-workers and you happen to be watching this and you're looking at it right now, uh, don't be afraid. I'm not going to expose you. I'm not trying to mock you. This is not... I'm not going to use your real name. The real names are going to be changed to protect the innocent. And, uh, well, just, it's just... This is just some good fun. I'm just, I'm just kidding around. Think of it more like a roast. Like if you're being roasted, right? Like like that, because that, that's what it really is. I'm not trying to be mean or malicious or anything like that. This is just good-hearted, being silly stuff. That's it, okay? I may not even, it, it may be like mixed more than one person than one person that I'm talking about. So don't even think, don't think it's you, okay? I'm not, not out to get you. Just, just be cool. Just be cool. Just be cool. It's gonna be okay. <laughs> okay, well I work in, a, in an office environment. What I'm trying to convey or the characters that I'm gonna bring up are probably typical characters in your workplace, in anybody's workplace. Like any, any job you have, you're gonna come across people like this and this, this is just, you know, observation fun, okay? Before I, before I even start getting into this, I don't know if you noticed this, but I guess everybody has a different persona when they're at work. Except for me. I pretty much try to stay the same. What you see is what you get. I, I'm always the same. I don't care. But there's other people that, you know, it's like going to jury duty. You got that awkward, everyone tries to be nice to each other, they giggle and laugh with nervous laughter, but you know, that kind of thing, they don't know how to be themselves. I, I think more mentality of what Bruce Lee said. You have to sincerely, honestly be yourself. Express yourself honestly. If that's what I try to do. That's the code I live by. That other people don't go by that. But other people have like a different persona at work than they do in real life. You don't really know them. You only know the persona they have that they show you at work and you know, they're typically a little overly nice or maybe they're just uh, too shy, shut in, like it all depends on the person. Let's dig right in there, okay? Let's just, let's just do this. Every job probably has a Jeff, okay? And Jeff is this one dude who's just so happy. Oh god, he's just so happy. You see him? He, he's joyful. He's walking around with a smile. And you, you say, what's up? He's like, hey, what's up? You know, you pass him in the hall or whatever, you're in passing. What's up, you know? And the typical response is like, you know, oh, hey, you know, hi, or, you know, it's just being cordial. I'm fine, how are you? You know, that kind of thing. Not this guy, no, not Jeff. Jeff is like, living the dream. Like, he's just like, that's, you know, he's got that attitude. He's just so happy, he's a positive guy. Like, I'm living the dream, you know? I'm like, okay, like, that's, that's cool. I'm like, and, but, like, I'm not going to help but make an observation here. You living the dream? Really, dude? You, this is your dream? You're living the dream. Being in the workplace, your job, that's your dream. Okay. I don't, I, personally, I think dream bigger. I really do. Everybody has dreams. I have dreams. But they don't involve being at work. They never do. I mean, I love my job. Don't get me wrong. It's my career. I've done it for going on 23 years now. So I've done it for a while. I think I know my my shit. I have a, a system of, of work. But that's my work. That's, I do that for a living. That's how I make my money. 
to survive in life, to pay bills, to buy food and gas for my car and stuff like that, you know? I, I have too many hobbies outside of work and I'm too creative and that is my downfall, okay? So any job a creative person has is like a torture, all day, non-stop torturous thing. It's like cruel and unusual punishment. It, it really is. There's so many other things I would rather be doing if I didn't have to work for a living just to live, you know? I don't care how much I love my job. That, that, doesn't, that doesn't matter. It still doesn't change the fact that I have other dreams I would like to pursue, but I have to be somewhere every day doing what I do, making the money that I need to make. And when I pass somebody at work and they're just all joyful, and like, oh, I'm living the dream. If really, you're living the dream. You gotta dream bigger. You gotta dream bigger, man. That's, I mean, come on. I daydream a lot, but that's, it's still not about work. <laughs> okay, Felix. Every job has a Felix. Felix is that guy that gets there early, he gets to work early, he's probably the first one there. Runs to get his coffee, so excited to be there, waiting for the person, whoever's walking through the door, to come in so he can run and talk to them and ask them things and just socialize. So he's just a chatty person, this guy. Likes to talk about current events, could be anything. Anything, it could be sports, it could be politics, it could be music, you know, what celebrity is dead, you know, anything that, that's happening currently, this is Felix. Felix wants to, he wants your opinion, he wants to give his opinion, and, uh, you know, he'll, he'll be there. He'll be there talking. He'll talk to you even if you're busy, even if he sees you're working. you got a deadline, you're trying to do something. Felix will be there, and he'll be telling you while you're working how he feels about things. Yeah, and he, he even tries to find what your hobbies are so that he has a similar interest he can talk to you about some subject that he can converse with you. Felix is okay, but uh, <laughs> it's funny because once Felix is busy, once Felix has work to do, he kind of brushes you off if you have something you want to go tell him. You know, you want to go shoot the shit. It doesn't work the same. It's like it's not, it's, uh, it's a little one-sided. Felix convenience only, like it, it has to be cool for him. If it's not, you know, go away from me, I don't want to hear you, I'm busy right now. Like, yeah. Felix. <laughs> Who else do we have? Who else do we have? Stan. Everybody has a Stan. Stan is a guy who's very, very calm, just very relaxed, almost comatose, almost zombified. He walks the halls in a very relaxed manner. He takes his steps very, very smoothly, very liberally. Yeah, he, he almost needs a bell, because you can't hear this motherfucking guy. You, just, you don't know he's coming. If you don't have mirrors everywhere, you won't know he's coming. If there's just no way to know he's on his way. His directions for work are very soft-spoken, but they're very much like uh, the, the guy from Office Space. You know, like, uh, yeah, are you going to get that done? That would be great. Like, that kind of, yeah. Stan. Stan, man. You gotta loosen up, man. Stan, Stan sometimes laughs, but doesn't want you to hear him laugh. He laughs in a very quiet, a very, <laughs> very quiet kind of way. Yeah, Stan, you, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta loosen up, man. You gotta, I know you're crazy. I know you're wild and crazy when you leave the workplace. I know you go to the mosh pits, you go to concerts. I, I know you jam out, dude. I know you do. I see only the soft side of Stan. I can't think of anybody else that's really good. Oh, oh, Paul. Paul is this guy who is very smart. Very smart guy, very witty, very funny. Life of the party, walks in, there's Paul. Let's get this party started, here's Paul. He, he's, the, he's the fun guy in the office. Paul, he's just so funny. Paul is kind of a dick. I say this because, uh, well, because he is. He knows everything. He's very braggy about his knowledge. Very, uh, I don't know, maybe not condescending so much. 
but more like, uh, you know, I know so much. Like, yeah, I'm just so smart. Like, you don't know how to do that? Well, I've been doing it this way for a long time. Like, you didn't know? Like, if, if you've been working here, you should know this is how it is. This is, you know, everybody knows. If you've been working here a day, you know what, what north is. You know what east is. You know, he's got those smart ass remarks for, for things that happen. Um, <laughs> Paul's the guy that will show you really quick how to do something on a program you're not familiar with. He'll show you really quick. And, and when he shows it to you, it, it's very random and very fast. You know, you're clicking here, clicking there, typing this, typing that. And it's so fast that you really can't keep up. But you're watching him and you're trying, you're trying to learn what it is that he's doing so you can duplicate it on your machine. You're not at your machine. You're at somebody else's desk. And, and you're at Paul's mercy and he's just going to show you how to do something as fast as he can do it and, and doesn't care if you're catching on or not. Paul, Paul's kind of a dick. Paul will say things like, if you ever have a question, if you ever have a question at all, ask me. Just ask me. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to ask a question. You come and ask me anything. Anything. That's what Paul will say. But then when you go up to Paul, a couple weeks after he's, he's said this, you go up to Paul and you have a question for him and you ask him, Hey Paul, is, how can I do this on the program? How, can you show me how to do this? How, how do you do Don't ask me that. Don't even ask me how to do that because that I don't know. I don't know how to do that. That's Paul. <laughs> so I'm trying to think of other people, other characters that are fun to, to talk about, but I can't. Those are pretty much the only ones that I can think about that are worth talking about. <laughs> Characters. I'm probably a character. I'm probably a character at work. I know I'm weird. I think I get more confused, like misunderstood, like Godzilla confused, you know? Like, he really wasn't meaning to hurt everybody. He, he was just, you know, cranky. He woke up and he was late for work. Like that that's the way I think of Godzilla. I don't I don't you know, everybody's misunderstanding him and thinking he's a bad guy. But he always saves the day. If you look at all the old Godzilla movies, he's saving the day. So like that's how I feel. Like I I'm a I'm <laughs> I feel like I'm a character that's being always misunderstood. I mean some people probably perceive me as being silly. Others probably perceive me as having being a moody bitch or something. Like I'm always in a mood. You know, oh, she's mad again. You know, it, it, some people might think of me that way. I, I like to think I'm I'm a cool chick. I like to think that I'm a free spirit. Uh, I'm honest, and I don't uh, I don't bullshit. I have a weird sense of humor. Yeah, I don't fuck them. I don't care. I don't care what they think of me. <laughs> I think that's why I'm dangerous. Because I just don't care. <laughs> oh my god. Um, I'll give you a tip, okay? If you've just been working or you've been working for a long time, wherever you happen to be in the river of work, in your work life journey, how to survive, I'll give you a tip. You don't want people talking shit about you that's gonna come back and bite you in the ass. Something that you said about somebody else. Always speak to everyone you are in contact with in the office. Always speak like if everyone can hear you, okay? Always. Don't say anything that you wouldn't want that person to hear. So that's how I see it. That's how I communicate. I'm just saying the way you speak, the way you talk about people, make sure it's something that you wouldn't mind them knowing because they're going to find out anyway. So you, you have to be aware of that. There's a lot of drama in the workplace. And this is how I have avoided it for many, many years. So yeah, go, go with that. That's my tip for you. That's all I got. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm gonna try to make some more uh, bitching posts regularly. I haven't been doing it, but uh, I'm gonna try to get back into it. It's a whole new year. 
if you are following us, if you're new to the channel, check it out, subscribe, like, do all those things that you want to do. You know, if you don't like it, that's fine too. We don't really, we don't really care. <laughs> but if you like it, then share it. And yeah, enjoy it. I mean, I don't know what else to tell you. I'm Cloudy Girl. My partner in crime is Pink Bunny. And she's got her Japan episodes. And we have the playlist set up, so we're going to try to add more content. Thank you for watching. Thank you for following. I hope you like it. I hope it makes you smile. Also, we have some Instagram accounts, and you can follow them. I'll put them here. They are more like a everyday ranting situations by either myself or Pink Bunny. And so that you need if you have Instagram then you should follow us. If you have if you have Twitter you should follow us on Twitter because all that is linked together. And uh, yeah man. That's all I have man. That's all I got. <laughs>